Musta. My name is Victor, and today something exciting came up. Well, I've I've had this for a few months now. This right here is the pinnacle of filmmaking. These two lenses are from Lawa. Why is there a lot of gears involved? Well, it's an anamorphic zoom that's this size. This is tiny. Usually it's like, I don't know, probably like this big. They've done it again with this lens, like making small, compact anamorphic lenses. We have the 28 to 55 and the 50 to 100. These are super 35 anamorphic zooms. So let's talk about the squeeze factor, the consistency while we're zooming in and out. These two are very, very consistent in terms of whenever you're zooming in and out. And if our subject here fluctuates in terms of its proportions, that means it's inconsistent. But so far, I didn't see any inconsistencies and that all the way from the wider end to the narrow end of these lenses, both of them perform really good and consistent with the zooms. Now let's talk about the squeeze consistency while using the focus ring. Now we've had issues with different products, with different brands, uh, budget anamorphic lenses like Surrey, when we're shifting the focus, the squeeze factor is inconsistent. We've seen Potato Jet, we've seen other creators discover this as well, and it was kind of a bummer because if the squeeze is inconsistent, then we kind of have to do keyframes for those. Especially for the faces, we don't want it warping back and forth, right? And we've tried that with the spherical objects as well, with different focal lengths of these two lenses, and they perform really good. I might have seen like a slight shift in squeeze, like you can see in the sample here on how it affects it see if that's just focus breathing or defocusing or if it's actually a squeeze factor. I'm gonna leave that up to you to decide. What I've noticed here is that it's actually parfocal and that's amazing. Like for an anamorphic lens to be parfocal, it just ticks a lot of boxes and the minimum focus distance doesn't change as well if you're zooming in and out. It just stays the same, even if you're in the wider end or in the narrow end. So consistency wise, these ticks all the boxes, especially for a set because you want it to be consistent, especially if you're filming, you don't wanna keep moving your lenses, you don't wanna keep switching lenses or adjusting. Let's talk about chromatic aberration. And with anamorphic lenses, usually this is present. And when I was going back and forth with Lawa, I mentioned that, oh yeah, there's a chromatic aberration that I've noticed at T2.9, and that they said this should have almost no chromatic aberration. And they had me open this guy and kind of make sure that the back focus is um, aligned properly. And it's performing the same way as I had when I got it. But in my opinion, even if it did have that chromatic aberration, it's soft, it adds character. And I really, really like how it renders here because it's not like those chromatic aberration where it's to your face. Like when I'm using spherical lenses, I add this prism blur and these exactly have that. And it's not, it's not like it's too obvious. It's subtle, it's soft, but it's there. Like I, I, I want to keep it that way instead of having like clean image. So let's see what the other reviewers are saying. But to me, I like the little chromatic aberration, even if, if it's just the back focus and if it is clean and it's no there's no chromatic aberration it's a, it's a win so you're getting a lot of value in terms of an anamorphic zoom because the next anamorphic zoom is like i don't know like five times as much as this or maybe more okay let's move on to distortion the distortion on this one the 50 to 100 is quite good it has a little bit of that pin cushioning distortion but on the 28 to 55 it's apparent especially on the wider end and that it's okay again this is an anamorphic zoom an anamorphic lens will always have distortion almost always pretty much and that's what filmmakers are looking for when they're filming with anamorphic lenses. A 1.5 times squeeze, it's really, really pleasing. I think 1.5 times squeeze factor is my 
kind of sweet spot in terms of anamorphic. Now I've tried the 2X, sometimes it's a little bit too much for me and you also have to crop in a lot to get the resolution that you want or the aspect ratio that you want. But 1.5 times crop uses a little bit more of the sensor and that it still gives you that anamorphic look that we all love and it's beautifully done. It's so natural, it looks pleasing in the footage. So now let's do a flare test and this is just with a torch and the 28 to 55 has this issue where you can see that the flare is kind of distorted or morphing, uh, curving on closer to the bottom of the frame and above the frame as well. You can see that both. But with the 50 to 100 lens, we get a straighter flare, I guess, like a more horizontally consistent flare. And what I have here are the blue flares. They also have amber. And if you want something neutral that adapts to any light source, get the silver one. Now let's talk about full frame coverage. I have the FX30 and the FX3. And naturally I'm curious to see if it would cover full frame. It does cover full frame on the mid range and the telephoto range. The 50 to 100 is quite good. It covers uh, mostly full frame until you hit the wider end, which is the 50, around 55. And then 28 to 55 on the telephoto end, you can cover full frame, but then once you get to 28, going wider, you can see that the silhouette is there, which is still a, an option if you want to add that into your aesthetic. But for the best results, always crop in at 1.5 or just use a Super 35 camera with these two lenses. They are manufacturing really good high-end cine gear and this is no exception. Gears are super smooth, focus, zoom, and the iris ring. They're all super smooth and consistent. And as you can see here, they're all in the same position so that you can just switch lenses easy as possible, especially if you have the follow focus attached to your camera. These two weigh about the same. The 28 to 55 is just a little over 1500 grams. And then the 50 to 100 weighs exactly at 1500 grams. The focus throw on these are the same. They're at 270 degrees focus throw. But what is different in terms of these two lenses is the iris blades that are included in both. The 50 to 100 has 11 aperture blades, so the bokeh is going to be smoother, a little bit smoother than this one. And the 28 to 55 has a 9 aperture blade iris. This comes in PL, which I have here positive lock. These are going to come in different mounts and it's going to be exciting because the anamorphic zooms are super versatile and that you practically only need to carry two lenses to cover you with what you need in your productions. One lens is about 2,999 USD and for the two set is 5,799. I think that's including the case as well. And the case is really good. It's like, it's not even like a cheap case like other companies do. This case seems like it's a Pelican case or a Nana case. And it has locking mechanisms over here. Insert is like laser cut and it's way better than other lens cases that I've used or I've gotten included with the lens. So props to Lawa for including this in the two lens kit. I think with these lenses, Lawa really did do a very smart move in terms of the anamorphic market. In this price range, you won't see an anamorphic zoom this cheap and this good as well. So this is one of the best bang for your buck anamorphic lenses that you can get because this is practically four or three lenses in one similar to the wider counterpart. And I think that's it. If you want to learn more about this, this is going to go into an Indiegogo campaign. The link is going to be in the description down below. So you'll get to see what the final price is on there and that what perks are included if you're an early adopter or you're an early pledger. So far, these are my favorite. And if I could keep them, I would. Unfortunately, I do have to return these loaner units at some point and hopefully I get to create some awesome projects with them for the time being. If you have any more questions about this awesome best bang for your buck anamorphic zoom lens set from Lawa, feel free to comment down below and I will see you in the next video.
Peace. Dream my heart, dream my heart, dream my heart.